Hi, it's Terry Ryder from Hot Spotting, and today I'm launching a new series, which is going to be a weekly series. Um, it could actually be a daily series because there's so much material to work with on the subject. This is my war on media misinformation. As I say, there, there is so much material out there, particularly right now in the reporting of the real estate industry and events there in in mainstream media that I could run a daily series uh, addressing the misreporting, the, uh, the wobbly analysis, the dodgy data, and uh, the misinterpretations of what's really going on in real estate issues, particularly right now in terms of what's happening with prices. Um, there are a lot of issues to deal with. Today I wanted to tackle one of the really big ones, and that is the, the tendency by economists, journalists, all sorts of people who aren't really real estate experts but like to um, have a say on the subject the tendency they have to talk about Australia as a single market. This is where a lot of the misinformation comes from. A lot of the alarmist headlines come out of um, this uh, liking, particularly of economists, to talk about Australian real estate as a single market. As I say, economists are particularly prone to it because real estate's not their stock and trade. It's not their area of expertise. It's something they dabble in occasionally. Their main um, focus of attention is economic matters, as they are economists, uh, the share market, which is we have one national share market. They tend to talk about the Australian economy, uh, the national unemployment rate, uh, what's happening with retail spending nationally. That's what they do. So they apply the same mentality when they turn their attention occasionally to residential real estate, and it's simply not valid. It creates a lot of um, misleading uh, information and misinterpretation of what's going on there because when they generalise to that degree um, and talk about Australia as a single market, they talk about Australian property prices as a single entity, it creates uh, false impressions, particularly right now. So I just refer to some of the recent headlines that come out of that. Here, here we have one which is from Business Insider, Australia's housing market downturn talk about where well, we, we don't have an Australian housing market downturn. We certainly have one in Sydney, to a lesser extent Melbourne. Both these places have been booming and are now past the peak of their up cycles, no doubt about that. But they're extrapolating it to a national situation and talking about Australia's housing market downturn. We don't have one. We certainly don't have one in Hobart, which is going very strongly, or regional Tasmania, which is going ballistic. We don't have one in Canberra, which is rising very solidly. We don't have one in Perth, which is actually coming out of a downturn into a recovery phase. There's no sign of an actual downturn in places like Adelaide and Brisbane, which are very solid markets, are showing signs of uplift. And in particular, we don't have one in some of the most important of our regional markets. Um, most of our really strong rising markets right now are in regional Australia, regional Victoria, regional Tasmania is very strong, lots of strong markets in regional New South Wales. And also we're starting to see signs of, of growth in regional Queensland, specific markets led by the Sunshine Coast. Um, so this, this whole notion of an Australian housing market that's in a downturn is a particularly false one, very misleading. It's creating a lot of fear and um, bad decision making around the country because they generalise as Australia as a single market. Here's an article in The Australian talking about the steep downturn in property prices. That's stated as a fact. As a, as a nationwide phenomenon, well, we don't have a steep downturn in property prices. In fact, I don't think we have a steep downturn in property prices anywhere in Australia, not even in Sydney, because I've examined Sydney suburb by suburb in the last week and found very little evidence of steep downturn in property prices. There's certainly evidence of decline in some areas, not all areas. There's a lot of places in Sydney where prices are holding up very well. Um, and the, the number of location we found where there has been as much as six or seven or eight percent decline are very, 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 very few in Sydney. So that whole statement I think is wrong, but they're stating it as a national phenomenon. This is David Uren, who's an economist writing in the Australian. He, should, he shouldn't be writing on real estate because it's not his area of expertise. Whenever he does, he always gets it wrong, um, but he's generalising. Um, here we have one um, Again, in the Australian, Australian, I believe, the Australian newspaper is the greatest source of misinformation on residential property anywhere in Australia. They just can't seem to get anything right in their reporting of it. Um, and this is referring to the tough um, 
Australian residential property market. Well, we, I don't think we have a, a tough market in Australia. We, we have a tough market in Sydney, no doubt about that. And Melbourne also passed its peak, but there's many other places in Australia where, which are going ahead with busy activity, active buyers and prices rising. All right. Look, here's another article from the Australian Fancy That. Um, as I say, a marvellous source of misinformation. Um, if you want to be really well informed about so what's going, what's really going on in residential property so you can make some good decisions, don't buy the Australian. Um, so here's another article uh, referring to what's happening with the cooling Australian property market. Well, that ain't cooling in Hobart or in Canberra or all those places in regional Australia I mentioned. Uh, there's no sign of, there's actually signs of uplift in a number of our major cities, including our major regional cities. Um, here's a press release from Master Builders Australia. Often the, the industry is part of the problem. Uh, the Housing Industry Association, the Master Builders and others, they tend to put out press releases talking about national situ situations. So they're adding to the problem of generalising about Australia as a single market. And they're saying the pace of increase in rents. Is, is particularly slow at the moment. Well, where are they talking about? They're generalising about Australia. There are some major cities of Australia where rents are rising really strongly. Canberra is one, Hobart's another. Um, in some of our other cities, um, rents are rising not as fast, but certainly two, three, four percent in annual terms, which is um, more than prices are doing in some locations. So we actually have a situation um, in the rental market where vacancies are particularly low in most of the major cities. Um, I presented some information yesterday in a broadcast showing that in six of the eight capital cities, vacancy rates have actually fallen quite significantly in the last 12 months. And as a result of that, rents are quite strong in most of the major cities and we're seeing um, some pretty healthy rent rises. Uh, but this press release from Master Builders Australia is unhelpful because it generalises and somehow manages to say that Australian rents aren't rising very much. And it's an absurd concept to talk about Australian residential rentals as one entity in a country this big with so many regional differences. And that's the point. If you examine what's happened with, let's just focus on the eight capital cities for a moment. If you examine what's happened with them over, say, the last um, three or four years, we've had multiple scenarios just in those eight places. We've had a couple of cities with strong booms. Um, we've had another city, um, which is Hobart, which has sort of got on board in the last year or so with, um, I wouldn't call a, a runaway boom, not prices rising at the level that they did in Sydney or Melbourne, or for as long, but certainly a, a solid upward market. Then we have um, some markets that are kind of just been meandering along, certainly nowhere near booming, just very moderate growth, such as Brisbane and and Adelaide. And then we have two cities where prices have been going backwards in the last, uh, say, three or four years. That's uh, Perth and Darwin. So we've got all these different scenarios playing out at any one time, um, and certainly in, in recent years in Australian real estate. And this is actually the norm in Australian real estate. I have a chart um, that I refer to frequently, which shows annual change in prices in our biggest cities since 1970, so it's almost 50 years of data. And what it shows is that we almost never have a national property boom in Australia. We almost never have a situation where all the major cities are doing the same thing at the same time. There's only been four years out of the last 50 when all, all of our major cities have had double digit growth at the same time. It's very, very rare for us to have one scenario playing out in all the major markets of Australia. It almost never happens. So. That just emphasises the point that it's um, unhelpful, inaccurate, misleading and ridiculous to talk about Australia as one market and to talk about what's happening with Australian property prices because that's what's leading to so much of the misreporting that's happening in mainstream media at the moment. So much of the misinformation is coming out of this generalisation. I think it's wrong to even generalise about Sydney property prices, you know, a city of 700 suburbs or more. Um, tens of thousands of transactions and, and as diverse as Manly versus Penrith and Bondi versus Campbelltown. How can you compare those markets and say this is what's happening to Sydney prices when you've got all this diversity? You need to be more sophisticated in your analysis, but media is incapable of it and economists who 
should never comment on real estate, I think, because it's not their area of expertise. But um, their contributions are endlessly unhelpful, inaccurate and misleading. So that's it um, for now. There's a lot of other topics to attract, to attack rather, in coming weeks as we address this, this whole issue of misinformation, which is misleading you, the consumers of Australia, trying to make sense of what's really going on in uh, markets around Australia, all these different scenarios playing out even within the one city. Um, and we'll, we'll address these issues in coming weeks, but that's probably enough for now by way of introduction of the series. Um, it's gonna be happening this time on a Thursday in coming weeks. So I look forward to having further discussions with you and I will welcome your feedback. Let me know what you think uh, by commenting um, in the comments panels on our Facebook page. That's it for now. Terry Ryder from Hotspotting. Signing off. Let's do it again soon.